Here are a few of the strange stories of members of royal families. Number 8. Prince Jeffrey Bokaya, Brunei. He's the younger brother of the Sultan of Brunei, Hassan Bokaya, and he's easily one of the richest people in the world. There's no denying the fact that Prince Jeffrey loves to spend money. For example, he spent roughly $3 billion in the past 10 years. He was reportedly spending an estimated $50 million a month at one point. But where did the money come from? Authorities discovered that Prince Jeffrey had personally blown through $14.8 billion from a government oil investment fund he was overseeing. The crazy thing is, he used to be the Minister of Finance. Because of his accusations of misappropriating funds, Prince Jeffrey was ordered to return his assets to the state of Brunei. This included more than 500 properties around the world, more than 2,300 cars, five yachts, and nine airplanes. However, he of course decided to fight the charges and the legal battle has ended up being the most expensive court case ever. Another example of him blowing through money was him paying $17 million for Michael Jackson to perform at his 50th birthday. That's not crazy, right? But wait, in order to have MJ perform, he needed a stadium, so he had a stadium custom built just for Michael to perform. However, he did not make the concert free for the people of Brunei. Then there's the women. He has three official wives, but he supposedly kept 40 different women around. We're not gonna go too deep into that since we know you can imagine the things he was doing. Number seven, King Carl the 16th Gustav, Sweden. He's the Swedish king who's been holding the throne for the longest in Swedish history. He's called Carl the 16th, but in reality, he's the 10th and not the 16th king named Carl. Why is that? That's because a royal historian named Carl invented a group of kings that never existed. His name is just a continuation of a tradition. Carl Gustav ascended the throne as successor to his grandfather, Gustav VI Adolf, from 1973 to the present day, smashing the record for the longest reigning monarchy in Sweden. However, a short while after he became king, a new law took effect that formally stripped him of his remaining executive power. The new law limited him to ceremonial functions and basically just informed of what's going on. But that doesn't stop him from doing things within the Royal House of Sweden. For example, he's demoted a sister, elevated several commoners to royalty, and also created new Swedish titles. But his biggest scandal was in 2010 when a tell-all biography claimed the king had frequented let's call them X-rated parties and strip clubs during the 90s. Yes, all this was done behind the Queen's back. Supposedly, the King also had an affair with Swedish pop star Camilla Henmark around the same time period, except this time, the Queen found out. Number 6. Princess Sheikha Latifa, Dubai. Sheikha Latifa bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is the daughter of the ruler of Dubai and the Prime Minister of the UAE, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Being a princess may seem like a dream life, but this isn't always the case. She tried to secretly escape her life in Dubai in 2018. This wasn't her first time trying to escape. Princess Latifa has been trying to escape her life for a long time. She claimed that she was detained against her will for three years with periods of solitary confinement ever since her first failed attempt to escape Dubai back in 2002 when she was a teenager. All she wants is a life of freedom and choices. Before her escape attempt, she recorded a 39-minute video detailing why she was trying to escape for a second time. She says that her father was the one who took her freedom from her because of her not following the customs and traditions of the ruling family. Did she successfully escape? No. She didn't reach India, where she was trying to go. The yacht that she was trying to escape on was intercepted by Indian and Emirati forces, and she was taken back to Dubai. Her last known public appearance was in 2018 months after her second escape attempt. Number 5. Sheikh Mohammed, Dubai We just finished talking about Princess Latifa. It's time to talk about her dad. Sheikh Mohammed is one of the world's richest and most powerful people. He's one of the most important personalities and influencers in the UAE and the Middle East in general. He's the owner of the Go Dolphin Racehorse Stables. He set up the Dubai Shopping Festival. He adopted the Burj Al Arab project to project one of the tallest hotels in the world. We can keep going about his list of public accomplishments, but we just talked about one of his own daughters trying to escape the family. And she wasn't the only family member trying to escape. His other daughter, Princess Sheikha Shamsa, had tried to escape her restricted life as well in 2000. Both of the princesses were taken back to Dubai and put under house arrest. His wife, Princess Haya of Jordan, 
escaped Dubai in 2019 with her two young children to England. With all these family members leaving, we can easily guess how Sheikh Mohammed wields his wealth and absolute power against his own family. Number 4. Princess Delphine Boal, Belgium When Princess Delphine was first born, the general public didn't know who she was, but she was certain that she would be a princess. Why? Because she knew that her dad was a royal family member of Belgium. It wasn't until 1999 when the public began believing that there was an illegitimate daughter of King Albert. During the late 1960s, Albert was Prince Albert of Liège, and he was married to Paola Rufio da Calabria, an Italian princess with whom he had three kids. Princess Delphine was born in 1968, to a baroness named Sybil de Seals Longchamps. She was a mistress of Albert. To make a long story short, Delphine was right. She had been fighting in the courts for over six years to prove that the former King Albert is her biological father. One big reason she wanted to prove it is because she would be entitled to one-eighth of her dad's estate. For quite a long time, she was hidden from the public, even though Albert regularly visited her and was present in her life before he became the king. Albert didn't expect to be king because his brother was first in line. However, in 1993, Albert unexpectedly became king after his brother died of heart failure and left no kids. That's when Albert decided to cut all ties in order to not bring a scandal to the family. So the existence of an illegitimate daughter became a state secret. Throughout the years of rumors, King Albert acknowledged the difficult stages of his marriage in the 60s and 70s, but on the other hand, he never officially recognized Delphine for years as his fourth daughter and didn't appear once in public with her. A DNA test in January of 2020 finally revealed the truth that Albert was her father. He finally admitted her existence after years of absolute denial. Number 3. Prince Fake Jeffrey Bokaya Brunei the prince is the son of Jeffrey Bokaya, the guy we had talked about earlier with the massive spending habit. Except for Prince Fake, his life is interesting in a not-so-scandalous way. Fake is a professional soccer player widely known as the richest footballer in the world in the soccer world. But that's something he's not wanting to be known for. Nor is it really true since the money isn't really his, yet. Fake was actually born in Los Angeles into the royal family. However, just because he was born into the family made him a celebrity in Brunei. And because of who he is and his interest in soccer, he's been able to be the captain of the national soccer team in Brunei. This is despite the fact that he's never played a minute of professional football during his time in England. However, even though he's wielded his privilege in his home country, he's still able to have a developing soccer career because of his talent. There's supposedly very little evidence of him coming from a world of unimaginable wealth, something his past coaches and teammates have said. In a rare interview, Fake said that he's played soccer as early as he could remember, and that's what he's been completely focused on his entire life. He stated that he's always dreamed of being a professional soccer player, and his parents have always been supportive in helping him to achieve that dream. As of 2020, he's still developing his career and playing for the Portuguese club Maritimo. He's previously spent his career playing in England for clubs such as Chelsea and Arsenal. Let's just say he isn't playing soccer because he needs the money. Number 2. King Vajiralongkorn, Thailand Maha Vajiralongkorn is the current king of Thailand. As of 2020, his net worth is estimated to be around US $30 billion. On paper, he seems like a normal king. For example, he graduated from the Royal Military College in Canberra, Australia, and worked as an officer in the Thai army when he was the prince. However, he hasn't exactly lived up to his dad's reputation since he's taken over, and he hasn't earned the trust of the Thai people. Thai protests have happened throughout 2020 against the Thai monarchy. Before he became the Thai king, he had a reputation for a playboy lifestyle. As a prince, he spent much of his time living a luxurious lifestyle in the mountains of southern Germany and Austria. He was often seen speeding around the German countryside in a white Porsche 911 Turbo. He was so pampered as a kid that he once admitted to an interviewer that he couldn't tie his own shoelaces all the way until he was 12 because someone else had always done it for him. Then there were all the women, but we'll give you the short version. He's been married four times and his first marriage was to his cousin. His most recent marriage was in May of 2019. He was marrying his former bodyguard, who's now the current queen. But let's get into his relationship with his dog. No, it's not that strange to have an official royal pet, but the king had a strange obsession with his late dog, Fufu. 
He used to dress Fufu in a Royal Thai Air Force uniform. Fufu was also promoted to the rank of Air Chief Marshal, and that's not that strange. But he also gave him a seat at official dinner dates, so Fufu was there for all the important royal events. Fufu was also given the official title of Crown Prince of Thailand while he was alive. This is where things start getting weird. In 2009, a video went viral of his third wife feeding Fufu its birthday cake and eating cake out of the same bowl as Fufu while she was in her underwear. Then in 2017, pictures surfaced showing him at the Munich airport wearing a white crop top with jeans. There was also a video of him walking around in the crop top while eating ice cream in a shopping mall. And those tattoos? Yeah, they aren't real. When these pictures in the video of him hit the internet, he threatened to sue Facebook if they didn't take down the photos. Having unflattering pictures of him was something he wasn't used to. That's because people in Thailand aren't allowed to criticize anything he does, and that includes making fun of him. The Thai monarchy is protected by strict laws that protect any royal family member from any harm, and that includes any criticism. Number 1. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan, England how often does a prince decide to leave a royal family? In January of 2020, Meghan Merkel and Prince Harry shocked the world when they announced that they would be stepping down as senior royals. It came as a shock to the royal family as well. They were in the dark just like the rest of the public. Some people blamed Meghan Merkel as the reason for her and Prince Harry leaving the family. Her first year as a royal family member was far from smooth sailing. She was given the nickname Duchess Difficult shortly after her wedding to Prince Harry in May of 2018. The couple's reasons for their split from the family appear to be the treatment they've received from certain members of the British press ever since they got married. They also felt like they were literally being driven out of the family. Supposedly, Prince Charles had told them that they wouldn't be part of a smaller working monarchy anyway, so they decided to leave. The only situation that's been close to Megxit was the abdication crisis of 1936. That was when King Edward VIII stepped down from the throne in order to marry Wallace Simpson who was twice divorced. In no particular order, here are a few of the most expensive homes rappers actually own and not just rent. Number 10. Travis Scott He's easily one of the rappers with the highest cash flow in the world in 2020. Travis dropped $23.5 million in cash on a massive mansion in the ritzy Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles. You can probably say that he wanted to keep up with his ex and baby mama Kylie Jenner. She just bought her own latest mega mansion purchase earlier this year as well. Originally, this newly built home was listed for a hefty $42 million. The house's design was inspired by luxury yachts. The house is wrapped in a smooth, curvy sheet metal that makes it look like a super yacht. The 17,000 square foot futuristic mansion sits high up in the Los Angeles Hills with views from downtown LA to the Pacific Ocean. There are seven bedrooms, eight bathrooms, and three powder rooms across three levels. When you first walk in the glass front door, guests are greeted by a floor-to-ceiling walnut sculpture. It was designed by master Japanese carpenter Toshi Kawabata. Then there's a 12-foot green wall that acts as a natural air purifier. The house was built with an emphasis on maximizing health and wellness in mind. There's also a massive list of upscale amenities, such as a 610 bottle wine cellar, a movie theater, and a state-of-the-art gym. There's a lower level entertainment area with a full bar, pool table, and more. There's not just one, but two elevators to help Travis get up and down the house. What's the tax bill on a property like this? Mm, roughly 230 grand a year. This means every month Travis essentially needs to basically earn at least 40 grand a month pre-tax to keep up with just the tax bill. But that's something he's not gonna have trouble with anytime soon. Do us a quick favor and hit that thumbs up button. Number nine, Post Malone. He's one of the hottest rappers out right now, so it only makes sense he owns a $3 million mansion. And apparently, he's supposedly preparing for an apocalypse with this mansion. Although he spent most of his time living in LA like most celebrities, he decided to buy this multi-million dollar house located in Utah. Post Malone's purchase was a 12,700 square foot home that sits on nearly seven acres in Cottonwood Heights. The home features five bedrooms, five bathrooms, and a guest house. It's surrounded by thousands of acres of conservation land, and that was a big reason why he bought the property. The mansion is in a secluded area outside of Salt Lake City, with breathtaking views of the canyons and the city skyline. Post Malone told Apple Music's Zane Lowe that Utah's remarkable beauty was a big reason for his move away from LA. Well, that and Utah's gun laws. 
That was another big reason. That's because Post Malone is an avid shooter and he wanted to enjoy the freedom that Utah brings. His mansion has a basketball court, wine cellar, and a home gym. He's put in a recording studio and 30 bunk beds for his best friends. He's putting in a massive underground bunker for him and all his friends to hide out, just in case 2020 got any crazier. Number eight, Drake. He started building his over-the-top mansion back in 2015. A hundred million dollars and five years later, it's finally finished, and it's known as the Embassy. He first spent $6.7 million for the property located in Toronto's exclusive Bridal Path area that's known as Millionaire's Row. He basically bought a property lot because he took down the previous mansion and completely started from scratch. He then hired luxury home designer and builder Ferris Rafali to take his home to a whole nother level. Today, it's become a 50,000 square foot palace because the house is just dripped in luxury. Since Drake was building this mansion in his hometown, he built it with the finest materials he could buy because he wanted it to last. Where do we even begin with this house? There's an OVO branded NBA regulation size basketball court. There's the state of the art recording studio and lounge. The house also has a 40 foot high living space called the Great Room. Drake had a completely custom Brusendorfer concert grand piano put in. That piano was designed in collaboration with Rafali and Japanese artist Takishi Murakami. Apparently, Drake's favorite spot in the house is his 3,200 square foot master bedroom suite. His bed and bed base weigh roughly one ton, and it costs more than most people's entire homes at $400,000. His closet is so massive, it's two stories tall. Then there's the master bath. The centerpiece of the bathroom is the tub that was carved from one solid giant piece of black marble. As for the outside, Drake got special permission from the city of Toronto to build the fences around his house at twice the legal height for optimum privacy and security. And he also spent about a million bucks to surround his property with tall trees. Number seven, Dr. Dre. After selling Beats Electronics to Apple for $3 billion in 2014, Dr. Dre decided to go on a little shopping spree. He celebrated by closing a deal on Tom Brady and Giselle's 14,000 square foot LA mansion. Of course, we don't need to say he already could have afforded it, but his Beats deal definitely helped him to afford it a lot more. This Brentwood home sits on a four acre lot. Tom and Giselle bought it in 2008 for $11.75 million. Then they renovated the property to five bedrooms, nine bathrooms, and seven fireplaces. The house was designed by Mega Mansion master builder Richard Landry. Tom and Giselle listed the custom built mansion for $50 million after it got a huge feature in Architectural Digest. But that's not what Dre paid. He got it on a 20% discount at 40 million bucks. The French Chateau inspired estate includes a fully equipped gym a media room, a sauna, a six-car garage, as well as a double-height wood-paneled library. And there's a recording studio, of course, because <laughs> Dre is known as a workaholic. What about the outside? There's a rock-shaped pool with a waterfall and a diving rock. And then there's the moat that's stocked with koi. When Dr. Dre gave a tour of his mansion in 2017, he said that this mansion is the last place he plans on living, which is why he's done a lot of renovations trying to make it perfect for his family. Number six, Will Smith. Does it surprise anyone that the older Fresh Prince of Bel-Air lives in a $42 million nine-bedroom mansion in Calabasas, California now? The mansion is right around 25,000 square feet and sits on a whopping 150 acres. The Calabasas compound project first began in 2003 by architect Steven Samuelson. It took Will and his wife Jada seven long years to complete their vision. The house was planned down to the last detail, so that means that all the Adobe-style interiors were custom designed. There's the quality of the traditional three-layer stucco with all its designed imperfections. There's the exposed ceiling timbers harvested from old homes and barns. Then there are the floors inlaid with river stones and spiral and infinity knot patterns to reinforce the project's handmade feel and spiritual aspirations. Everything had to be done by hand because that's what Will wanted. They needed to, quote, feel the love and labor that went into every piece of this place. The house had to feel as natural as possible, but there's modern amenities, of course. Outside, there's a basketball court, volleyball court, tennis court, a built-in trampoline, and an outdoor pool. This place is its own huge complex. There's also a large garage, which has enough space to fit eight cars. Oh, and this place has its very own lake, complete with a small gazebo in the middle. Will says the quiet lake gazebo is his favorite spot of the entire house. He told Architectural Digest, that's where he gets all the answers. So he doesn't use the meditation lounge that's in the house. There's also a recording studio. That's the studio where Willow Smith recorded her 2010 hit song, Whip My Hair. Number five, 
Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Beyonce have a staggering net worth of over a billion dollars. They currently live in their $88 million mega mansion in Bel Air. They bought this mega mansion back in 2017, and it was the most expensive property bought in LA that year. Even for a couple that's worth over a billion, they put down 30 million and they took out a $52.8 million mortgage to buy the house. That equates to $252,000 a month for a 30-year loan. That's close to buying a house in cash every month. Still, that's much less than the $400,000 a month they were paying to rent a Malibu home while they were looking for this mansion. This huge 30,000 square foot house is made of six different structures. There are eight bedrooms and 11 bathrooms. The windows are made of bulletproof glass and of course, there's a state-of-the-art security system installed. Expansive patios, numerous sunbathing decks, and four swimming pools make up their almost two-acre garden. There's also a basketball court, a spa, a media room, and a garage that fits up to 15 cars. Number four, Kanye West. He wanted a futuristic Belgian monastery, and Kim wasn't going to disagree. They bought an estate for 20 million bucks back in 2014 in the exclusive gated community of Hidden Hills, California. When they first walked by the house in 2013, Kim absolutely loved it. Kanye called it, quote, workable, so it makes sense why they dropped another $20 million in renovations to bring it up to their style. That took almost five years of renovation and construction. Of course, Kris Jenner has claimed that the house is now worth $60 million. The couple had worked closely with Belgian architects Axel Verwoerd to completely remodel the home and to create an almost stark church-like aesthetic. The floors alone are made of Belgian plaster that can only be repaired by a special crew flown in specially from Europe. Basically, a lot of the 20 million meant a wholesale transformation of the proportions of the house's many rooms. They're all sheathed in a luminous off-white plaster and accented with other pale natural materials. The entire home is decorated in muted shades of white, brown, and gray. That's the color scheme that's supposed to relax and calm Ken and Kanye from all the chaos around them. The house sits on three and a half acres. There's also some usual big house amenities, such as a regulation-sized basketball court with its own locker room. There are also two swimming pools, two spas, two barbecues, and a vineyard. We have to mention this original Jean Royer polar bear sofa that's in the house. Kanye actually sold his Maybox so he could buy this couch. Even Kanye's got a budget when it comes to things he really wants. Number three, Lil Wayne. He's got a net worth of roughly 150 million, so he can afford to splurge a little. He owns this $17 million mansion in Miami. Lil Wayne used to live in another house in Miami that he bought for $11.6 million in 2011. When he sold it, he lost $1.6 million on the sale because it only sold for $10 million in 2017. But we doubt he's really feeling that loss. His newest mansion is located just off the coast of Miami Beach on Allison Island. It's a little over 10,600 square feet, and it's got seven bedrooms along with 11 bathrooms. Each of the bedrooms has its own private balcony. The master suite has the largest balcony with an L-shaped terrace to enjoy the view of the ocean. The mansion features an entry with grand mahogany and a room with windows that extend from the floor all the way up to the 22-foot ceilings. However, the coolest feature about this house is the overall feel. The entire design for this home is to make it feel as though it's floating on water. It begins with a pond that feels like a moat you have to cross to get to the front door. Once you're indoors, the movable walls make it hard to tell where the outdoor starts and the indoor end. Inside the house is an open-air atrium with living walls of vegetation that thrive in the tropical subclimate of Allison Island. There's also, of course, the required pool some outdoor dining space, and a cabana. His living room also has an entire wall of glass sliders that open onto the backyard to give the best views of the water. Number two, Rick Ross. Rick Ross easily owns the biggest mansion in Georgia. Long story short, former heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield had to sell his 45,000 square foot mansion to a bank for seven and a half million dollars. That house quickly went back on the market for 8.2 million. But Ross submitted the largest bid on it and it was sold to him at a steal for just $5.8 million. The mansion located in Fayetteville County was built back in 1994. It's a whopping 54,000 square feet. With that kind of square footage, that means it has a ridiculous 109 rooms that include 12 bedrooms and 21 bathrooms. It came with a pool that holds more than 350,000 gallons of water. Other features of the house include an indoor pool because who only has outdoor pools? There's a tennis court, a handball court, a bowling alley, a softball field, and a movie theater. In addition to this insane mansion, 
Ross bought even more land and properties next to the mansion he owns. Rick Ross has paid a million bucks for two more houses and two lakes on 87 acres in Fayetteville, Georgia. Number 1. Gucci Mane Gucci and Keisha Kaor are one of hip-hop's hottest couples. With Gucci's success since he got out of prison, he's made plenty of money to splurge on a mansion in Fort Lauderdale. Gucci and Keisha have reportedly spent $20 million already on their mansion. This house was in the process of being built back in 2017, and Gucci and Keisha have shown glimpses of the progress on social media. Their new mansion basically feels like a Versace palace with all the gold throughout their house. Here are some of the weirdest things that are worth a fortune. Number 11, Gutenberg Bible. The Bible is the best-selling book of all time, and the Gutenberg Bible is the most valuable Bible there is. How much is a Gutenberg Bible worth? A perfect copy hasn't changed hands in years, but in 2007, one single page sold for $74,000. In 1978, Christie's auctioned off a perfect two-volume Gutenberg Bible for $2.2 million. In 1987, Christie sold an incomplete version to a Japanese company for $4.9 million. Who knows how much a complete one would go for today? Gutenberg Bibles are rare and valuable for a number of reasons. In addition to their scarcity and status as the first of their kind, they are books with exceptional quality. Johannes Gutenberg used finely crafted paper and calfskin as well as a special ink of his own invention that's remained vivid for centuries. Most of the Gutenberg Bibles were sold in loose pages that the buyer would then have bound in whatever style they wanted. That gave each Gutenberg Bible its own uniqueness. It's believed that 180 copies of the Gutenberg Bible were produced. Today, only 48 copies are known to exist, some of them only partial, and almost all of them in the hands of museums, universities, and libraries. Hey, do us a quick favor and hit the like button right down there. Number 10, Salvatore Mundi. This painting is called Salvatore Mundi, and it's a long-lost Leonardo da Vinci painting of Jesus Christ. It was sold at Christie's in New York in 2017 for a little over $450 million to a Saudi Arabian prince that shattered the record for any work of art bought at an auction. Why is it so expensive? Well, this painting was commissioned by King Louis XII of France more than 500 years ago. It used to be owned by Alexander Parrish. He bought it for only $10,000 at an estate sale in 2005. $10,000 into almost half a billion. Only 24 widely accepted Da Vinci paintings are left in the world, so the discovery of a Da Vinci painting was a huge deal. This one is basically one of the holy grails, and that's why it sold for so much at auction. It's one of the last paintings by Da Vinci. Most major scholars of Da Vinci's work accepted the painting as an original at the time of the auction, but to this day, there's still debate on whether or not the painting is real. Could Saudi Arabian Prince Badr bin Abdullah have paid $450 million for a fake? Number 9. Little Patch of Red a Chinese postal stamp dating from the Cultural Revolution was auctioned off for 13.8 million yen, roughly 2 million bucks in 2018, making it one of the most expensive stamps in the world. There are only nine of these stamps in existence, and this one is the most expensive stamp to have ever been sold in China. Its nickname is Little Patch of Red. Chinese antiques collectors love vintage Communist Party propaganda items. The Chinese government tightly controls everything surrounding the events of the Cultural Revolution. The Communist Party built a personality cult around Mao Zedong, so original items of memorabilia with him on it are rare. And that's why this stamp sold for so much. Number 8. Elvis Omega Watch this Omega watch was given to Elvis by RCA back in 1961. Why? It was to commemorate Elvis selling a milestone 75 million records. An engraving on the back of the watch reads, To Elvis, 75 million records, RCA, Victor, 12, 25, 60. Christmas Day 1960 was the day that Elvis got to 75 million records and not the day he was given the watch. Elvis loved watches and had hundreds of them. And he would trade watches with a lot of different people. And that's the story behind this particular watch. The story goes like this. Elvis was sitting in a restaurant when he was approached by a man who said, nice watch. Elvis glanced at the man's watch, a diamond said Hamilton, and replied, I like your watch too. Do you want to trade? That man's nephew ended up with the watch and was able to auction it for a cool $1.8 million. Number seven, the Phantom. 
only 517 Rolls-Royce Phantom 5s, and this one was owned by John Lennon. And because this one was owned by John Lennon and painted in crazy colors, this particular Rolls-Royce is most likely priceless. Lennon didn't know how to drive at the time he bought it, but that didn't matter because he got a driver to drive him around. Lennon made his own crazy changes to the car. For example, the back seat could change into a double bed. A floating record player was installed that prevented the needle from jumping around while the car was moving. Speakers were mounted in the front wheel wells so that anyone inside the car could talk to people outside. And you can't forget the custom paint job. Is there another luxury car that says I'm from the 60s more than this Rolls Royce? Lennon donated his Phantom to Cooper Hewitt Museum at the Smithsonian Institute. The museum then sold the car in 1985 for $2.3 million to billionaire Canadian businessman Jim Pattison. Number 6. One Cent Magenta this one cent stamp is worth nine and a half million dollars. It was issued for a penny in 1856 in British Guiana, a colonial outpost in South America, and this is the Mona Lisa of stamps. But why? In 1855, when Britain established its colony on British Guiana, it didn't send enough stamps. So the island decided to issue their own temporary stamps. One cent stamps were for newspapers and four cent stamps were for letters. When more official stamps finally arrived from Britain, the stamps were removed from circulation. People kept the four cent stamps because they were useful for letters, but no one kept the one cent stamp since they were used for newspapers. And it seemed like these stamps were all lost throughout time. Until a 12 year old boy named Vernon Vaughn found a used one in his uncle's papers. He eventually sold it to a stamp collector for roughly $10 in today's money. Too bad little Vernon didn't know it was the last one back then. To this day, it's still the last one known existing. The stamp changed hands between many rich, famous stamp collectors, and every time it's been sold, it was sold for a profit. Number five, Acts of Congress. George Washington's book, Acts of Congress, contained his personal copy of the Constitution and Bill of Rights. And that's the biggest reason why it sold for a whopping $9.8 million in 2012. That set a record for any American book or historic document. It had Washington's signature marking it as his own, something that drove up the price of the book. It was in near pristine condition after over 220 years. It was actually specially printed for Washington in 1789, his first year in office as president. The book was sold from Washington's personal library at Mount Vernon in Virginia in 1876. It was then bought at auction by collector Richard Dietrich in the 1960s. The successful bidder was the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. It's a privately funded nonprofit that owns and operates Mount Vernon, which used to be Washington's Virginia estate. The book was bought back from the Dietrich family to specifically be returned to Washington's Mount Vernon Library. Number four, The Walking Man. Alberto Giacometti's 1960 sculpture of a spindly man called Walking Man 1 sold for a whopping $104.3 million at auction in 2010. It was the most money ever paid for a work of art at auction back then. Who has this type of cash? Watch our secret billionaires video to find out who does. This six foot tall bronze statue is basically a wiry man in mid stride. Giacometti made the statue in 1961 as part of a commission to plant several of his bronze figures in New York City. However, he famously struggled with the project and eventually quit, but he did create several of the planned figures. Walking Man 1 was one of them, and it's considered Giacometti's most iconic piece he ever created. Number 3. Casablanca Piano One of the most famous pianos in the world was sold in 2014 to the tune of $3.4 million. Which piano was it? The piano in the movie Casablanca, used in the scene where Ingrid Bergman famously asked Sam to play the song as time goes by. The actor playing Sam, Dooley Wilson, actually didn't play the piano at all. The music was dubbed over as he just pretended to play it. The piano is easy to recognize as the iconic prop from Casablanca starring Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey Bogart. So why was this piano so expensive? The Casablanca piano is such a significant piece because the character Humphrey Bogart played hid his travel documents in the piano. So it showed up in the film many times, becoming an iconic piece of movie history. Number two, Ruyao Ceramic. Does this bowl look like it's worth $38 million to you? 
This 900-year-old bowl made during the Song Dynasty set a new auction for Chinese porcelain. An anonymous buyer placed the winning bid of 294 million Hong Kong dollars back in 2017. So why did it go sell for that much? This bluish green bowl is a brush washer, which are shallow porcelain bowls that were used in ancient China to clean calligraphy and, and paintbrushes. The style of the bowl is known as Ru Guan Yao or Ru Ice Crackle. Since 1940, only six Ru ceramics have appeared at auction. The Ru ceramic that sold before this one was also another Ice Crackle bowl. That one was sold at Sotheby's for $27 million in 2012. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you don't forget to click that subscribe button. Number one, Janal Lioness. The Janal Lioness is a three and a quarter inch tall white limestone figure created over 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. And it was sold for $57 million in 2007. The sculpture is considered one of the last known masterworks from its era. But we're still talking 57 million for an ancient limestone lion that fits in the palm of your hand. The figurine was found at a site near Baghdad and had been on loan by a private family to the Brooklyn Museum for nearly 60 years. The family decided to sell the tiny work of art for financial planning reasons. Here are a few of the most outrageous things only rich people buy. Number 12, Luxury Ice. If there's luxury water sold out there, why can't there be luxury ice sold either? For some rich people, simply relying on the ice maker from their freezer or filling up one of those trays with tap water is far too simple. Instead, there's Glace Ice, a luxury line of ice cubes that come in pouches. This ice was inspired by a 19th century entrepreneur named Frederick Tudor. The folks from the Luxury Ice Club will mail you pouches of fancy ice for close to a thousand bucks just so you can have special ice for your drinks. Supposedly, they have a proprietary manufacturing process that creates a zero taste profile ice unlike regular ice. This allows you to maximize the beverage experience. They say that their design provides, quote, minimum dilution and maximum cooling, greatly enhancing enjoyment at the point of consumption all for a few hundred bucks. This ice has somehow stayed on the market for years. Hey, do us a quick favor and hit that thumbs up right over here. Number 11, Gold Bullion Mouse. You guys know how you can increase your productivity late at night. Studies have shown that a gold mouse can actually increase your productivity up to 300%. Okay, we just made that up. But what is true is that whenever someone rich encounters something that they feel doesn't properly advertise their net worth, they can always just put gold around it. And that's why this mouse exists. For a price tag of around $36,000, you can get this gold bullion computer mouse. Does adding gold make a mouse function any better? And the answer to that is yes, of course. Who wants to feel like a peasant with a regular mouse? Anytime you use a mouse made with actual gold, you're just gonna feel so much better. Number 10, Super Plexus. For 55,000 bucks, you just have way too much money. You could spend it on a thing called the Super Plexus. The Super Plexus is a really expensive learning tool slash unnecessary toy that was made for kids. Hamaker Scheimer says that this giant 3D marble maze is something that would challenge the limits of your kids' brains. This thing is completely handmade from Finnish birch plywood, which we're willing to bet is expensive. The crazy thing is, the entire length of the track is 31 feet longer than a football field. And while it may improve how your kid handles marbles on a maze, but is this thing really better than a Rubik's Cube? Number 9. Crocodile Skin Umbrella For most of the world's population, an umbrella serves one purpose. To keep us dry. Is there any reason that someone would need a crocodile skin umbrella for $50,000? This umbrella was offered by a company called Billionaire Couture. It doesn't look to be available today. If you go on their website, it's not there anymore. If you wanted one back in the day, you had to custom order it. Despite the fact that it's leather, it was supposedly completely functional thanks to the water-resistant treatment this leather umbrella received. Was anyone actually dumb enough to actually buy one of these back in the day? We sort of doubt it. Number 8. Diamond Contact Lenses Diamonds are artificially expensive and they're used mostly for jewelry. We'll get into the artificially expensive part another day. However, apparently there's a market out there for diamond contact lenses. 
This eye jewelry is the brainchild of Dr. Chandreshkar Chawan, a Mumbai-based doctor who's also made contact lenses infused with 24 karat gold. Not only do the gold and diamond contact lenses make the wearer look like aliens, they also cost a lot of money, 15 grand to be exact. Regardless of how cool or terrifying you may think they look, they do make whoever wears them stand out. But for 15 grand? Would you wear these if someone gave them to you for free? Let us know in the comments. Number seven, mini Ferrari Testarossa. Want to make sure your kids grow up to be as bratty as possible? This is probably the starter gift you'd get your kids for one of their birthdays. This replica of a Ferrari Testarossa costs 97 grand. For that price, why not just buy them a real car and hire a driver for them? Powered with a lawnmower engine, this thing can reach speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. Only three of these were actually made, and while 97 grand is pretty expensive for an actual car, at least for this thing, you can tell where the money went with the meticulous details it has. Fully functioning doors, pop-up headlights, a gear shift, an actual Ferrari steering wheel, real leather interior, and there's a car phone. Ah, the good old days, right? This Ferrari is made for kids aged five to nine. While it's hard to argue that this toy is pretty cool and almost any kid would want to have it, spending this amount of money on something that a kid is going to grow out of in a few years seems pretty insane. Plus, you know when these kids turn 16, they're probably going to want a real Ferrari. Number 6. Toilet Paper Yep, toilet paper. Swiss luxury company Joseph's Toiletries has taken bathroom glamour to the next level. They have a monthly subscription that allows its customers to receive a wide variety of toilet paper along with soaps and creams for a nice subscription fee of $100 a month. How much better can toilet paper get from Charmin's at Target though? The package from Joseph's Toiletries seems to be quite simple with its all white box set. But this is everyday toilet paper we're talking about here. What about toilet paper for most special of occasions? Well, there was a $1.3 million roll of toilet paper sold by the Australian company, The Toilet Paper Man. Someone actually bought this roll of toilet paper that's made out of 24 karat gold. There's no way someone paid full price for this roll. Number five, gold shirt. India is a land of tradition and ancestry, but it's also a place with some very extravagant clothes for certain events. India is a place where some people became super rich by selling to the huge population. The most expensive shirt in the world is in India. The owner and creator of this shirt is Pankaj Parak, a former high school dropout who managed to turn his life around when he began manufacturing clothes. As a birthday gift to himself, he decided to celebrate by creating an elaborate shirt made entirely out of gold. Well, almost entirely. Two months of hard work by a team of 20 artisans was required for a total of 3,200 hours. He had the shirt made because he was just addicted to gold. The shirt is fully flexible and supposedly comfortable because of the lining on the inside. It's even able to be washed, but I mean, I personally wouldn't be throwing this shirt in the washer. The shirt is valued at roughly $175,000, with the shirt costing as much as that it's a no-brainer that he earned the Guinness World Record for the world's most expensive shirt. Number four, Tiffany yarn. One of the more interesting things which can be purchased online on Tiffany's website is a ball of yarn. Yes, a ball of yarn. But since we are talking about the brand that made Audrey Hepburn a global fashion icon, it's safe to say this isn't just any ordinary ball of yarn. Tiffany's exclusive creation was handcrafted with thousands of silver threads, making it a pretty exquisite work of art. Other examples are a $625 first aid box, a $1,550 coffee can, and a $375 straw. Tiffany is saying, hey, if you have to flush your money down the toilet, at least do it here. From the website's picture and description, it looks like a normal piece of yarn, but when you take a closer look, you realize the amount of work required into manufacturing a piece like this. By now, you can imagine that a handcrafted ball of yarn isn't cheap. It's currently listed for 9,500 bucks. Who buys this stuff? Number three, Monopoly set. Zontic, an online store popular for its deluxe limited items, has created the perfect set for true fans of Monopoly, a leather, gold, and silver edition of the classic game. The sides of the board are handcrafted with the finest capskin leather and embossed with a choice of silver or gold depending on what the client may want. A storage area for pieces is located on the bottom of the board where the pieces lay on a soft, luxurious black felt interior. 
The selection is fully customizable with game pieces coming in a selection of pewter, sterling silver, or silver gilt. Although the standard game comes with a choice of US dollars or British pounds, with street names belonging to these countries, clients can request special destinations as part of the game for an additional price. Depending on the client's choice, the game set can range from roughly $5,700 in pewter all the way up to $14,000 in what they call billionaire silver gilt. Number two, gold mask. Research has proven gold is the most effective material at preventing the spread of viruses. Said nobody ever, except this Indian guy. This custom made gold mask cost him 4,000 bucks to make. That's actually not that bad a price for what it is. But how well does it work? Probably not at all. Businessman Shankar Karad said that his mask weighs 60 grams or roughly two ounces and took eight days to make. He got the idea for the gold face mask after reading about some guy wearing a mask made from silver. He also added that he typically likes to wear around two pounds of gold jewelry everywhere. Doesn't that have to get annoying at some point? The best part is he actually told reporters that he doesn't wear the mask for attention. Number one, gold seg wheel. What really says luxury more than gold? Gold is the one thing that can make almost anything look super expensive. The $35,000 Segwheel made of gold is the most expensive Segway in the world and completely unnecessary. It's made by Gold Genie, the company that will literally gold plate anything that's not alive. Why exactly did they make this thing? Probably just for publicity. Here are some of the most ridiculous things athletes have bought. Number 11, Scotty Pippen. While Scottie Pippen's on the court accomplishments cannot be questioned, he did make some questionable money choices off the court. Exhibit A would be a jet he bought for $4 million. Now, buying an actual jet isn't actually that crazy because you can recoup most of the cost of the jet if you bought the right one. Plus, it can be a business expense. However, the expensive part of owning the jet is the upkeep. And unfortunately for Pippin, he had actually bought a broken jet. How? Because Pippin apparently did not inspect jet before buying it. The jet's engine needed a million dollars to repair. He ended up suing his lawyer and Scotty never fixed the plane. Hey, do us a quick favor and hit that like button. Number 10, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi figures that if he doesn't want to have neighbors, the best thing to do is to buy it all up. When you have noisy neighbors, there are typically two choices, accept it or move away. But when you're Lionel Messi, you have another option. Messi and his family moved into a house in a coastal town south of Barcelona back in 2012, but they were extremely noisy. Messi's neighbors right next door had bought the house right before the 2008 recession, and they would have lost money if they sold it at market value. So they decided to rent it out, and that meant a lot of strangers kept coming around and having wild parties. Messi's original plan was to build a dividing wall, but a lawsuit from the neighbors prevented that. So instead, Messi just bought the house himself just so he could have some peace and quiet. But this isn't as crazy as... Number 9, Danny Granger. Former NBA star Danny Granger decided to build a bat cave. Danny Granger earned some pretty big contracts. He made over $70 million in the NBA. That's a lot of money, but is it actually bat cave money? Granger started his bat cave project and continued with it for three years. The catch here is that we don't know if it was ever completed. Maybe that's the whole point of having a bat cave. The last update of the bat cave was when he gave an interview to Sports Illustrated talking about the details in 2012. In the interview, he mentioned that the bat cave was having a circle built in it that Granger would park on. Then the circle would just spin around just so Granger wouldn't ever have to back out of his driveway. And oh yeah, after that, the car would get lifted up on the circle into his house. Do you know if the bat cave was ever finished? Let us know in the comments. Number eight, Al Jefferson. Al Jefferson must own the biggest bed that we've ever seen. And it makes sense. Al Jefferson is six foot 10 and almost 300 pounds. In his 13 years in the NBA, he's made over $133 million. So putting it into a bed that fits him makes sense. 
but did he need all this bed though? His teammate Mo Williams was so amazed, he tweeted out a photo of Jefferson in his bed. Look at this bed! It's 10 feet by 12 feet! It's huge, even for a guy like Jefferson. The bed cost Jefferson more than 23 grand, a price that's more than what a lot of people pay for their car. But a big bed definitely is not as crazy as... Number 7. Marquise Daniels Buying a chain of his own head? Why? Marquise Daniels spent a decade in the NBA before retiring in 2013, and he made more than $36 million during his career. Having all that disposable income made Daniels realize that he needed a diamond replica of his head made. It kind of looks like one of those faces in Madame Tussauds wax museum, right? The exact price of this custom chain wasn't ever revealed. The designer was Jason of Beverly Hills, who definitely charges a hefty premium for his work. What's crazier than Daniel's chain? This tattoo that he got on his forearm. Number 6. Chris Singleton In 2012, Washington Wizards rookie Chris Singleton spent $10,000 on lottery tickets for the Mega Millions. That may seem like a small price for a player who made close to $1.5 million that year, but playing the lottery is basically throwing money away, and it's almost never a plus EV situation. But in this case, maybe it was. Even then, baseball superstar Matt Kemp got in on the action, and he had just signed a $160 million contract a year earlier. The Mega Millions lottery was up to $640 million that year. Singleton said it was either blowing the cash on the lottery or blowing it in the club. Singleton's NBA career was brief since he played just three seasons for the Washington Wizards, but he did make $4.7 million in his career. Number 5. Ryan Khalil Ryan Khalil took out an ad in the Charlotte Observer guaranteeing that the Carolina Panthers would win the Super Bowl back in 2012. Part of being a pro athlete is all about having confidence, but this is taking it a bit too far. You don't need to look it up, the Panthers didn't win a Super Bowl that year, nor any other year since Khalil took out that ad. For what it's worth, Khalil played center for the Panthers his entire 12-year career and actually was one win away from a Super Bowl title in Super Bowl 50 in 2016. When the Panthers got to the Super Bowl that year, some journalists started to say that Khalil was just a few years off in his prediction. But it's better to be off in a prediction than be off on a budget like... Number 4. Antoine Walker Despite making more than $108 million during his NBA career, Antoine Walker has had money troubles. We're not really highlighting any single one of his purchases, but really, just his spending problem. Anyone can go broke if they spend more than they earn. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, he claimed to have a thing for cars. By his own admission, he usually had six or seven new cars at any given point. On top of that, he was buying homes, expensive jewelry, and all kinds of things that he really didn't need. His habit of lending money to friends and his gambling issues didn't help either. In 2010, Walker filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy just two years after retiring from the NBA. However, his story didn't happen in vain. He now works with Morgan Stanley to help educate athletes on how to manage their wealth responsibly. Number 3. Deshaun Stevenson Deshaun Stevenson famously bought an ATM. Just why? Stevenson entered the NBA right out of high school in 2000 and played for 13 years. Stevenson made more than $27 million playing in the NBA. So why did he put an ATM in his house? Apparently he was inspired by Rob Durdick because he had one. That way his friends could withdraw cash when they needed it because, come on, even if you're rich, it has to get tiring loaning people money. You could make the argument that the ATM is technically an investment since he charged a $4.50 convenience fee. You would think he would charge an even five bucks because, you know, that whole Abraham Lincoln $5 tattoo. Number two, Rafael Nadal. Tennis superstar Rafael Nadal just finished buying this yacht that's worth a whopping $80 million. Okay, okay, just kidding. It only cost him around $6.2 million. It would have been ridiculous if he spent 80 million on it because that would be more than a third of his estimated 200 million dollar plus net worth. 6.2 million for a yacht is actually quite reasonable for someone worth 200 million dollars or more. Plus, it also makes sense when the house he owns has a yacht club in the backyard. In fact, 
This purchase isn't ridiculous at all. In fact, it's beginning to look like a smart move, kind of like the one made by Ice Cube. Watch this video to learn more. Nadal had been a longtime yacht lover, and he finally made that splurge in 2019, and the yacht was delivered this year. It's an 80-foot sunreef power catamaran that he named Great White. Nadal designed the interior himself prior to it being launched at Sunreef Shipyard in Poland. Number 1. Carmelo Anthony Carmelo Anthony posted a picture of himself beside a camel with the caption, quote, Everybody got dogs and cats as pets. I got a camel. Okay, makes sense. When you've been a 10-time NBA All-Star, that means you buy a camel? With the money he's made, getting a camel is barely a drop in the bucket, but it's still just strange. Do you know how long he kept the camel? Let us know in the comments. Here are a few of the guys who had the most expensive affairs ever. Number nine, Alec Wildenstein. Alec Wildenstein was married to Jocelyn Wildenstein, who was also known as the Bride of Wildenstein and Catwoman. That name for her countless plastic surgeries in order to keep her looks up for Alec. Unfortunately, it seemed to have the opposite effect because she found him in bed with another woman and that's why the divorce happened. They ended up having a highly publicized divorce. Who was Alec anyways? Alec was a French businessman, art dealer, racehorse owner, and member of the powerful, multi-billionaire Wildenstein family. Back in 1978, he married Jocelyn, but they later divorced in 1999, basically because of his infidelities. He had to give her a whopping $2.5 billion at the time of the divorce and $100 million a year for the next 13 years. The crazy thing is that even after getting $2.5 billion, Jocelyn Wildenstein filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in federal court just 19 years after becoming a billionaire from her divorce. Hey, do us a quick favor and hit that like button down there. Number 8. Rupert Murdoch Rupert Murdoch's second wife, Anna Torv, received $1.7 billion after their 31-year marriage ended. Anna was just 18 years old and working for Rupert Murdoch's Sydney newspaper, The Daily Telegraph, when she had the opportunity to interview Murdoch. Well, let's just say she took full advantage of that interview, and they got married shortly after Murdoch split from his first wife. Murdoch and Torv appeared to have had a solid marriage for 31 years, and during that time, they had three children together. But trouble started when Anna asked Rupert to quit his job and retire with her, which Murdoch didn't want to do. But what really set things off, supposedly, was that Anna grew suspicious that Rupert had a girlfriend named Wendy Dang. So she pushed for a divorce, and even though Murdoch insists that he didn't become romantically involved with Wendy Dang until after their separation, they married just 17 days after the divorce was finalized. Murdoch and Dang themselves divorced 14 years later, but Murdoch signed a prenup this time. Number 7. Harold Hamm Harold Hamm was just another middle-aged multi-millionaire worth around $50 million when he married Sue Ann Arnell, his second wife. However, during their time together, he became a billionaire. As the chief executive and majority shareholder of Continental Resources, Harold came to own the largest piece of the greatest oil discovery in the shale-rich plains of North Dakota. His net worth was more than $18 billion at one time during the course of their marriage. But Sue Ann accused her husband of infidelity, and after she had moved out of their home to a different city, she began documenting his extramarital behavior on audio and videotapes. Harold admitted to spending roughly 150 grand on an affair in court filings. After a nine-week trial, a judge in Oklahoma City ruled that Harold had to pay nearly $1 billion to Sue Ann. Number 6. Adnan Khashoggi for almost two decades, Saudi billionaire, entrepreneur, and arms dealer Adnan Khashoggi held the record for the most expensive divorce settlement in history. Adnan was worth as much as $4 billion in the 80s. Before the divorce, he was known for being one of the richest men in the world. Later on, he was in the news for the most expensive divorce settlement at the time. After 13 years of marriage, Adnan and Saraya Khashoggi decided to split. Apparently, they actually both had their own dates on the side. 
Adnan supposedly had up to 11 pleasure wives on the side, while Soraya was seeing former parliament member Jonathan Aitken. The Khashoggis raised five children together that included four sons and one daughter. However, Soraya gave birth to one more daughter named Petrina after the divorce. The DNA test revealed that Petrina actually wasn't Adnan's daughter, but Aitken's. Even with that little interesting information, the couple still agreed to a settlement that gave Soraya $874 million. Number 5. Dmitry Rabolovlev Elena Rabolovlev is a Russian divorcee who was granted the world's largest divorce settlement ever of $4.8 billion from her ex-husband Dmitry. But that award was cut to around $600 million by another judge after her husband appealed the decision. That's a huge difference, but still, it's a settlement over a half a billion dollars. Dmitry is one of the small group of Russians who became ridiculously rich during the post-Soviet privatization of the economy. He's the former owner of Uralkali, a company that produces and exports fertilizers. Dmitri's wealth came from the sale of his stake in Uralkali for $6.5 billion in 2010. Elena was by his side as he rose from a doctor turned entrepreneur into a stockbroker and banker before becoming chairman and majority shareholder of Uralkali. But Elena came across documents on Dmitri's computer containing the passport information of various guests visiting their yacht. The information included a lot of names of girls she didn't recognize. Yep, Dmitri's mistresses. This was what exactly triggered the divorce that Elena filed within weeks. Next came the long back and forth court battle that was publicly reported. After eight long years, they reached an undisclosed settlement. We're gonna guess it was more than $600 million. Number 4. Mel Gibson Mel Gibson and Robin Denise Moore had 26 long years of marriage and 7 children together. But Mel's girl on the side, actress Deanna Alois, proved to be too much for his ex-wife. Mel's mistress actually offered to help his wife win the divorce because Mel had lied to her too about the truth of their relationship. Their divorce was one of the most expensive celebrity divorces ever. When the divorce was finalized, Robin received a huge $425 million divorce settlement. Some of Mel's wealth was immediately transferred to Robin in particular, two Malibu homes worth a combined $22.5 million. Essentially, she got half of Mel's fortune. The couple didn't have a prenup, and therefore Robin was entitled to half of his worth. It seems fair, they've been married for so long and they had seven kids together, and she supported him for most of his career. What do you think? What are some of Mel's assets? Well, in addition to cash, there's a hundred plus million dollars in real estate investments worldwide. For example, Mel bought an island in Fiji for $15 million back in 2005. As for film residuals, Robin is entitled to half of every future check Gibson receives for the rest of his life. Number 3. Bernie Ecclestone Bernie Ecclestone is the former CEO of Formula One. He's one of the most popular British billionaires and Bernie is well known for his marriages. After 24 years of marriage, his divorce from his second wife, Slavika, got a ton of attention. Bernie at the time was among the richest people in the UK as he was worth an estimated 2.4 billion pounds. Slavika wanted to get a divorce because of Bernie's quote, unreasonable behavior. Well, he admitted to asking her if he could have a mistress. Well, at least he was honest about it. The divorce settlement was estimated around 1.2 billion pounds but there appears to be an unusual twist. Rather than Bernie paying Slavika a good chunk of his fortune, she was actually paying him at the rate of 100 US million dollars a year. But how? This unusual payment scheme from an offshore account was arranged more than a decade before they divorced. Bernie's assets were transferred into his and Slavika's name in the 90s at a time when he faced heart problems. If he had died, she would have had to pay 40% inheritance tax on money received from him. Normally, spouses are exempt from this, but not in Bernie's special case. Number 2. Vladimir Potanin Ever try to get off easy for something you know is going to end badly? That's essentially the case here. Natalia Pananin was married to Vladimir Pananin for 30 years and had three children together, but they got divorced in 2014. Vladimir claimed that he and his wife had come to a $140 million cash settlement as well as splitting a portfolio of properties and a monthly allowance of $250,000. 
but his former wife denied she ever agreed to anything. Under Russian law, wealth acquired during a marriage is split equally. That's why Natalia filed a petition in court for a claim for her fair share of half. Vladimir owns 30% of the world's biggest nickel producer, Norilsk Nickel, which has a market value of $30 billion. She was hoping to get half of his $15 billion fortune at that time. Natalia apparently was driven by revenge because her husband announced he wanted to end their marriage of 30 years because he had a child with his secret mistress. The secret mistress ended up becoming his second wife. Unfortunately for her, a Russian court rejected her claim in July 2017, arguing that the lawsuit's limitation period had expired. Number 1. Jeff Bezos The Bezos divorce is the most money anyone got in history from a divorce. When the divorce first became public, the internet was shocked by the fact that Jeff didn't have a prenup to protect his billions. Yep, Jeff Bezos was the one that cheated and filed for divorce. His mistress was news anchor Lauren Sanchez. The way that their relationship came out was actually because of Lauren's brother. For some reason, Lauren texted her brother Michael texts that Jeff Bezos sent her. So he then sold the screenshots to the National Enquirer. And that's how Jeff Bezos was outed to the world with having a mistress. Mackenzie Bezos was, by many accounts, instrumental in founding Amazon, so the money she's getting is definitely appropriate. After their divorce settlement, Mackenzie instantly became one of the world's richest women thanks to an estimated $35.7 billion worth of assets that got put in her name. Here are some of the most expensive foods. And just wait until you hear how much Salt Bay charges to add some gold to a steak. Number 10, Rolls Royce of Tacos. For a modest price of $25,000, you can get the world's most exclusive taco. You'll just need to go to Frida's restaurant in Gran Velas Los Cabos Resort on the Pacific coast of Mexico. With this taco, of course, there's gold involved. An infusion of gold is found on the corn tortillas. There's also the exquisite combination of Kobe beef, beluga caviar, civet coffee, black truffle brie cheese, langoustine, and dried marita chile pepper salsa. As if all these ingredients weren't enough, even more gold is added to the taco as an embellishment. Let's keep in mind that the 25,000 is all for just one single taco. How many of these tacos do you guys think they've sold so far? Let us know what you think in this poll. And do us a favor and hit that like button. Number nine, billion dollar popcorn. Five dollars for a single kernel of popcorn. This is how much Chicago-based company Burko charges. They've made it their mission to provide an unforgettable experience for whoever buys their billion-dollar popcorn. And of course, it's covered in gold. But that's not just it. There's organic sugar, butter from some Vermont creamery, and Nielsen Massey bourbon vanilla. There's a very special salt that brings everything together, and it's produced only on the Danish island of Lazo. According to ancient mythology, the island of Lazo was a place where many gods would feast. That's why this salt is so special. The process to create it is known to be at least a thousand years old. And supposedly, the salt doesn't taste like any other salt. The creator of Burko's popcorn had to make some calls to the Danish consulate, fly to Denmark, and have a meeting in an office that was behind a couple of bank vault style doors. Number eight, Louis the 13 pizza. Renato Viola is one of Italy's best master pizza chefs in the world. This is why he charges 8,300 euros for the most expensive pizza in the world. He's a proud member of the Italian acrobatic pizza team. This team has won various awards and pizza making competitions in Italy and all across Europe. So what's on the pizza? Let's just say there's a whole bunch of expensive ingredients. The dough is made with certified organic flour with natural yeast and paper-thin flakes of pink salt from Australia's Murray River. The salt is highly mineralized and flaky, and it provides the dough with a delicate flavor and texture. And the dough takes 72 hours to make for some reason. Then there's caviar, and not just one, but three different kinds of caviar. 
There's also lobster, prawns, and a special mantis shrimp. So far, this is a pizza for seafood lovers. Then there's seven different types of cheese, including organic buffalo mozzarella. Okay, then there are the drink pairings to go with the pizza. It's served with Remy Martin, Louis XIII cognac, and Krug's Claude du Misnau 1995, a fruity champagne. That's where all those euros will go. Is this pizza way too fancy or no? Let us know in the comments. Number seven, bird's nest soup. Bird's nest soup is exactly what you think it is. A soup made out of a bird's nest. But here's where it gets interesting. Chinese culture swears by its special properties, which Chinese people think helps people stay younger. A diet that includes at least 10 grams of bird's nest soup a day is said to help increase the chances of keeping your energy up and youthful looks longer. No wonder people pay a fortune for this dish. A kilo of white nests can sell for up to $2,000, while a kilo of red nests can sell up to $10,000. This delicacy definitely comes with some controversy. The type of nest that's used for the soup is only produced by a very specific type of bird, the swiftlet that lives in Southeast Asia. Swiftlets are known to be an endangered species. With the rising trend of Chinese people consuming enormous amounts of soup made from their nests, the chances of swiftlet surviving decreases by the minute. Number six, chocolate pudding. $35,000 is what it costs for the world's most expensive chocolate pudding. But this dessert is much more than chocolate pudding covered in gold. It's the combination of some of the most expensive ingredients. Even a diamond was thrown in. Starting with a light biscuit jaconde at the bottom, this chocolate pudding stands along a layer of champagne jelly specially created for this concoction. The dark chocolate base is then embellished with some edible gold leaves and a diamond. This pudding can only be found at Lindith Howe Country House Hotel in England. The pudding was first bought by a 60-year-old man who wanted to splurge for his birthday. This pudding broke the record at the time for the most expensive dessert in the world. Number five, Almas Beluga White Caviar. Caviar is known as the quintessential food for rich people, but there's a specific caviar that takes it to the next level. Known as the creator of the rarest beluga white caviar on the market, Iranian brand Almas has managed to create an air of mystery around the production of caviar. Almas's beluga white caviar currently holds the Guinness World Record for the most expensive caviar in the world. It's created using only eggs from a rare albino sturgeon more than 100 years old. As the sturgeon gets older, their eggs apparently become smoother and more aromatic with a spongier texture. One kilo of this caviar will run you around $25,000. But if you feel like just trying it out, 30 grams is around 330 bucks. Number four, Yubari King Melon. The Yubari King Melon is gonna be tough to beat when it comes to expensive fruits. In 2016, a pair of these melons were auctioned for the crazy amount of over $27,000. This melon is as exclusive as it gets because it can only be produced in the region of Yubari in Japan. Yubari King Melon is known for its very sweet taste, which isn't very common for a melon. Not only is it considered a delicacy among food connoisseurs, but it's also seen as some of the highest bidding wars ever known for a fruit. The man who won the auction said that he felt the need to support the Yubari region farmers, who he thinks year after year provide some of the best fruits in the world. Although the price he paid isn't the price for these melons, their price range is still quite high. Normal ones still are quite expensive. They go for about $50 to $100 a piece. Number three, Golden Opulent Sunday. $1,000 and a reservation 48 hours in advance is what it takes to try the Golden Opulent Sunday in New York City. This Sunday is made at Serendipity 3, an extremely exclusive restaurant in New York's Upper East Side. The Golden Opulent Sunday is a mixture of Tahitian vanilla ice cream infused with a layer of Madagascan vanilla topped with chunks of Venezuela's finest chocolate and Amity Porcelina chocolate syrup. All of this is covered by, of course, a generous layer of 24 karat gold leaves. Number two, Golden Steak. 
By this point, we feel that anything with gold is as gimmicky as it gets. This golden stake is coming from a guy whose entire business empire exploded because of a gimmick. Who would have thought Salt Bay sprinkling salt from his hands in a specific way would have made him a star? Salt Bay, or AKA News Rat, recently started offering stakes plated in gold. Without the gold leaf, his tomahawk stakes already cost an expensive $275. With the gold, it's 1,000 bucks. In case you're wondering, no, edible gold isn't that expensive at all. 10 sheets of edible gold leaf is only 25 bucks at Walmart, and that's not buying in bulk. But what's the point of having gold in food anyways? Gold doesn't have a flavor nor taste. It doesn't taste metallic because it doesn't dissolve in our mouth. And there's essentially no texture because edible gold is so thin. All gold gives us is presentation. So really, what do diners get when they order a golden steak? In reality, a golden steak just gets attention from people sitting close. Salt Bay may want to present the steaks with sparklers, like ordering an expensive and big bottle of champagne at a club to promote sales. But the one thing he definitely doesn't want to do is serve it completely randomly. That was Dwayne Miranda's experience when he visited Salt Bay's restaurant in Miami with his friends. They ordered a few steaks on their night out. The steaks arrived covered in gold, but they didn't think too much of it. Well, that was until a bill that was well over $5,000 arrived. Dwayne and his friends protested that they never ordered the gold steak, so the staff called the police. Long story short, they were forced to pay the bill. What would you do in that situation? Let us know in the comments. Number one, bluefin tuna. The tuna king strikes again. This time it was for $3.1 million. In January of 2019, Kiyoshi Kimura set another record when he bought a 612 pound bluefin tuna at the Tsukiji Fish Market auctions. The Tsukiji Fish Market in Tokyo is known for providing some of the finest seafood in all of Japan, if not the world. They're also well known for their bidding process for fish where prices fly by the second. Kimura broke his own record, he said, in 2013 when he bought another bluefin tuna for the price of $1.7 million. These prices are established as a publicity stunt, and Mr. Kimura has been the highest bidder at the New Year's auction for eight of the past nine years. On a normal day, a similar-sized fish would sell for around $60,000. The record is all about status because it creates a lot of publicity for Kimura and his sushi empire. The famous bluefin tuna is found off the northeastern coast of Japan. The problem is overfishing, and it's made the bluefin tuna an endangered species. Here are a few of the most interesting gold diggers. Number 9. Crystal Harris Whenever you think of Hugh Hefner and his playgirls, your mind definitely gravitates to gold digging. It's definitely about the fame and the power for most of the girls. His third wife, Crystal Harris, is a special case of gold digger. She was the type to admit her ways. As you'd expect, she was a former Playboy cover star. Harris met Hefner during a Halloween party at the Playboy Mansion in 2008. They hit it off and got engaged three years later. However, she called off their wedding five days before the wedding was supposed to take place. That month's cover of Playboy had already been designed featuring her as Mrs. Crystal Hefner. Because she had cold feet, a sticker was placed on the cover over Harris that read, Runaway Bride. On top of canceling the wedding, Harris appeared on a radio show where she revealed that she didn't find Hefner attractive at all. Yep, she pretty much admitted she was just there for the fame and money. However, she later apologized for her comments, and Hefner even took her back. They ended up tying the knot on New Year's Eve 2012 at the Playboy Mansion. Well, obviously he had no concerns about whatever she said. Hugh Hefner's marriage to Crystal Harris might have seemed like a sham, but to their credit, they seemed happy together. Harris remained married to Hefner all the way until his last days. However, Harris was reportedly not included in Hefner's will after they signed an ironclad prenup. The Playboy founder's $43 million fortune was divided between his four children, but apparently Harris was still going to be, quote, looked after. Number 8. Evelyn Lazada Evelyn Lozada may just be the greatest gold digger of the 2000s, even if she didn't get the most money. It's just that her track record lets us know what she's really about. Lozada was last engaged to ex-superstar baseball player Carl Crawford for close to three years. They got engaged in Christmas 2013 and they had a kid together in 2014. But in 2017, 
she moved on. That was the same year Crawford called it quits in baseball. You may think that it's because he's not bringing home the big checks anymore. That is true but he still had plenty of money in the bank. She actually wanted to stay together. The problem was her. Apparently, Crawford got cold feet when Evelyn played hardball on a prenup. She supposedly demanded half of his fortune in their prenup. What's the point of a prenup if she's just gonna take half? Obviously, he decided not to sign the prenup and they never got married. Smart move. The breakup wasn't exactly shocking for anyone because Evelyn has a reputation of gold digging professional athletes. Reportedly, even Crawford's former teammates' wives called her out as a gold digger. This isn't the first time Lozada was accused of gold digging. She was very briefly married to former Bengals wide receiver Chad Johnson. They got divorced in 2012 and Johnson last played in 2011. And before Chad Johnson was engaged to Antoine Walker. They broke up in 2009. Walker last played in 2008. Have you seen the pattern here yet? Antoine Walker accused her of ditching their relationship when he ran into financial trouble. He went on a radio show and said that Evelyn reaped a lot of the benefits when the cash was coming in, but when money got tight, she chose to leave. Yep, that's a life lesson Walker had to learn the hard way. Don't be with anyone who wouldn't do the same for you. Number seven, Mackenzie Bezos. Okay, okay, let's get one thing straight. The term gold digger certainly doesn't apply to all marriages. And even if a split ends up with the other person getting a lot of money, it doesn't mean that someone was in it for the money all along. And the Bezos divorce is the biggest proof of that. Mackenzie Bezos got the most money in history from a divorce. When the divorce first became public, the internet was shocked by the fact that Jeff didn't have a prenup to protect his billions. But they had been together since Jeff's start when he didn't have much money. What they should have noticed was that Jeff is the one that cheated and filed for divorce. They were married a year before Amazon was founded. Even though technically Jeff made all those billions during the marriage, that's not to say Mackenzie's support didn't have any influence on his success in any way. Neither Jeff nor Mackenzie knew that Amazon was going to be as successful as it is. She was taking on the risk the same as he was. If Amazon failed, she would have been responsible with any of Jeff's financial problems as well. Mackenzie has a bachelor's degree from Princeton and worked for Jeff Bezos when he was a hedge fund manager before Amazon was conceived. They got married in 1993 and Amazon was started a year later in the back of their family garage. She stepped away from Amazon in its early years to raise their four children. In short, she's not exactly someone who couldn't have made her own money. And without her support, who knows how things could have turned out for Jeff Bezos. Mackenzie almost certainly gave up her own professional ambitions to further his and may well have created her own independent fortune had Jeff never been in the picture. But they decided to team up and they both did their part. So in this instance, we don't think it's unfair for her to take half, especially when Jeff messed up. After their divorce settlement, Mackenzie instantly became one of the world's richest women thanks to an estimated $35.7 billion that went straight into her personal account. Number six, Oksana Grigoryva. Oksana Grigoryva is no stranger to dating men with money. She's a Russian singer, songwriter, and pianist who grew up in Russia. Her first marriage was in 1989 when she was married for three months to a random Russian lawyer. That Russian lawyer cash flow wasn't enough for her, so in 1992, she married a British artist named Nicholas Rowland, but then they broke up and she started a relationship with actor Timothy Dalton, who played James Bond in a couple of Bond movies. They had a kid together, but their relationship ended in 2003. However, she really hit the jackpot in 2007 when she started dating Mel Gibson. They never got married, but they had a daughter together in 2009. Is this theme starting to sound familiar? By April 2010, they had already split up. To make a long story short, they started going to court over child support payments. There were also the, uh, let's just call it, allegations that she had against Mel Gibson. Gibson wasn't allowed to go near her or their daughter. In 2010, Gibson offered her a settlement worth approximately $15 million, but she refused it. That backfired on her because in 2011, when she settled with Gibson, she got a lot less. She was awarded $750,000 and a house to live in until their daughter Lucia turns 18. After that, the house would be sold and the money would turn into a trust fund for Lucia. A couple of years later, she sued her lawyers because she said they gave her bad advice. She said that they had gotten her to sign a poor agreement. And of course, she broke the agreement she had. In 2014, Oksana chose to talk about Mel Gibson on Howard Stern's radio show. Yeah, that was a mistake that cost her almost $400,000 because under their agreement, she wasn't supposed to discuss him at all. Oksana filed for bankruptcy shortly after her interview on Stern. She claimed that she was so broke, she had only $10 in cash to her name and $48,000 in assets. Her debt came in at a staggering half a million dollars. Should have just taken that $14 million settlement earlier, but she probably would have gone broke anyways. 
Number five, Chris Judd. Who says that women are the only gold diggers out there? There are definitely guys out there doing the same thing. Jennifer Lopez and Chris Judd met back in 2000 when she was hired to direct and dance in her music video, Love Don't Cost a Thing. They had a whirlwind romance and got married less than a year later in September 2001. But by June 2002, they were already divorced. The loss of privacy because of her superstardom bothered him, but apparently that's not the reason why they divorced. He's been quoted multiple times saying that things just didn't work out. But after being married for only around nine months, Chris got away with $6.6 million. Now sure, $6.6 .6 million might not seem like much compared to the other mega-sized divorce settlements, but if you do the math here, JLo was paying him roughly $750,000 per month of marriage. You would think that Kevin Federline would have made this list, but he actually didn't get too much. Brittany and K-Fed got married after only three months of dating. This was while Kevin's ex-girlfriend was pregnant with his kid. They were married for less than three years, and he ended up only getting $20,000 per month in child support from Britney. Yep, Chris Judd definitely secured the bag. Maybe there should be some rapper's backup plan when they go broke. Find out more here. Number four, the Ecclestone situation. Wait a minute, Bernie Ecclestone is a gold digger? Technically, sorta. It's an interesting situation, and that's why it made it on this list. Formula One billionaire Bernie Ecclestone may be the world's best kept man because of a technicality. Since the divorce from his second wife, Slavika, he's received more than a half a billion dollars from his ex-wife's trust fund. Needless to say, it's a very unusual agreement. Rather than the billionaire giving money to his ex-wife after getting divorced, she paid him roughly $100 million a year. When he and Slavika, who's 28 years younger and almost a foot taller, divorced in 2009, most people assumed that she was going to get one of the biggest divorce settlements in history. They had been married for 24 years, so you kind of knew what was going to happen. After all, technically the wealthier spouse is the one who pays the ex. And Bernie Ecclestone, with a net worth of $3.1 billion at the time, is plenty wealthy. So why did she end up paying him? Well, in the late 90s, Ecclestone's assets were transferred into Slavika's name when he was suffering from serious heart problems. He had a triple bypass in 1999. If he didn't make it, the inheritance would have been left to his daughters. However, the problem is the money would have been subjected to British taxes at the rate of a whopping 40%. So, yeah, he transferred everything to his wife's name. So while Bernie was the one who made the billions, his ex-wife technically held the deeds and pink slips on a number of his assets. So it looked like she was the wealthier one to the courts. Interestingly enough, today Bernie is married to an even younger woman than his second wife, and Bernie and Fabiana Flossy are about to have their first kid together. Yep, he's going to be a dad at age 89. Number three, Jocelyn Wildenstein. Jocelyn Wildenstein is as well known for her huge divorce settlement as she is for her looks. Jocelyn met ex-husband Alec Wildenstein in 1977 while on a safari with friends in Kenya. Alec Wildenstein is a billionaire art dealer who came from a family of art collectors and horse racing experts. After a year of marriage, Jocelyn started to use his wealth for extensive cosmetic surgeries. She and Alec even got his and her eye lifts. According to a number of biographies, she kept changing her appearance to look more feline. She spent millions of dollars on surgeries and kept a lynx as a pet, often saying that the lynx has perfect eyes. Alec and Jocelyn Wildenstein divorced in 1999, and that entitled her to a whopping $2.5 billion and an annual 100 extra million for the following 13 years. The funny thing was, even the judge told her not to use her alimony payments for any more cosmetic surgery. Despite being awarded that much money, she still filed for bankruptcy in 2018. Find out why and how here. Number two, Anna Nicole Smith. In her short but fast 39 years of life, Anna Nicole Smith definitely left her mark on the world. She was actually born Vicky Lynn Hogan. She grew up poor and dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. But that didn't stop her from becoming one of the most famous faces during the 90s. Her cover on Playboy and also her signing to Guest Jeans made her a household name. But before she got famous, she met one person who would completely change her life. In 1993, when she was 26, she met 89-year-old Texas oil tycoon billionaire James Howard Marshall. They had met while she was yeah, performing at a club for gentlemen. They went on and got married the following year, despite a full 63-year difference. Obviously, she immediately got the gold digger label. She insisted that she married him for love, not for the money. She said that Marshall took her out of a terrible place and cared for her and her son from her first marriage, so in return, 
return, she decided to take care of him. Well, to be fair, that's definitely one type of love, but we wouldn't call that romance. Anyways, a quick 13 months later, her new husband went on to the next life. And much to the outrage of his family, Smith sued for half of her late husband's $1.6 billion estate. She claimed that while he didn't include her in his will, he had intended to set up a trust to provide for her, just like he did when he had set up a trust for his family. Marshall's son, who inherited almost the entire estate, argued that his dad had already been adequately generous to his trophy wife. He gave her plenty of gifts and treated her to a lavish lifestyle. The whole thing went back and forth for a long time. In 2006, she ended up at the United States Supreme Court still fighting for her inheritance a full 11 years later. She was initially awarded roughly $450 million, but that verdict was later dismissed. The sad thing is that her and Marshall's son both passed before the case could ultimately be resolved years later. Number 1. Milika Marjanovic have you heard of uh, Bojan Marjanovic? He played for the Detroit Pistons, and he's one of the tallest people in the NBA. He and his wife have to keep brushing off the negative comments about their massive height difference. And at first glance, you may think this case is a classic gold digger case. But apparently, they actually fell in love before he was rich and famous. And she actually finds the comments people on the internet say about them to be really funny. Alicia Marjanovic is a full two feet shorter than her seven foot three inch tall husband. She often laughs about their height difference by posting photos and videos on social media highlighting their two foot gap. However, not all of the comments are well meaning. Some of them are clearly accusing her of marrying the NBA star for the money only. According to her, when someone's truly happy and happy in life, just as she is, they don't pay attention to crazy comments. People can think what they think. And she's right. If the comments aren't true, it doesn't make sense to pay attention to them. They've been together for more than a decade and now have two children. Mrs. Marjanovic says she finds her husband's hectic schedule more challenging than the fact that he towers over her big time. Well, there used to be hectic schedule anyways before quarantine became a thing. When they first started dating, she was mostly bothered by the fact that they couldn't make any plans together because of his schedule. Birthdays, anniversaries, and celebrations generally used to pass by without him being around. However, both of their families pretty much got used to this lifestyle. Hey, whatever it takes to generate that cash flow. Watch this next video to find out about rappers who went broke. 